to run a SAS macro on the iPhone, you would start out with the iPhone desktop here, and you can swipe through and find the um, BI Flash software. In this case, if you were to tap on that on the BI Flash, it will then connect to the SAS server, and once connected to the SAS server, it will list out all the programs and data sets that you recently accessed. And to get to the macro, you would tap on the macro um, tab at the bottom here. So once you do that, it will list all the macros that you have access to in a specified library. If you were to um, click on or tap on this library selection item up here, it will list out all the live names on the server that has been granted permissions uh, on, uh, onto the iPhone. So in this case, uh, there's a series of macros. If I were to tap on this first macro, the data view, um, it will present all the parameters. In this example, I have an input data uh, parameter, and it has a library component and a data set name. Uh, I also have uh, the report title and uh, sort by variable and so forth. This corresponds to a macro on the server. So this is um, on the SAS server. You have a particular macro here. You can actually view the macro. And in this example, you can see that this macro has an in data parameter, a sort by parameter, a report title, and out. Those are the named parameter. So in order to assign the user the capability of selecting it, for example, the in data uh, parameter here is a predefined type of uh, SAS data. So in this case, the iPhone will display the in data as um, you know, a two-level live name dot dataset name selection here. If you were to tap on that live name, it will um, allow you to select uh, library names that you have access to with data sets. And in a similar way, you can tap on to get to the data. Um, the report title, if you were to go back to the server here, the report title is, in, in this case, an autofill text. Note that that's different than just a plain text. The text field of the out, if we were to go back to the iPhone, the out, uh, which is the output location, is just a plain text field that the user can type in. So if they were to tap on that, um, they can then get a keyboard that they can type in a different value. Um, so instead of data view, for example, you can type in uh, data view uh, 2 or something like that uh, dot uh, HTML HTML so that's just a plain old text field um, but that is different than for example the uh, uh, text autofill what that means is values from this variable as defined in the value list here will automatically populate a, pull the, or a selection list to be filled in. So let's try that on the uh, iPhone here. So in this case, if I were to go to the report type and uh, title and then tap on that, not only does it give me um, the t text that I can type in, it gives me, in this case, uh, all the variables or the values that were defined in the, on the server side as um, you know, a particular variable. Uh, this is meaningless, but normally you would have valid values which will make recommendations. So the user can select a value um, and then it would be populated in there or they can type in their own. Note that the uh, sort by is a checklist which is also populated by another variable value here. So as you can see, there are many different types, then on, off, password, date, um, lots of different kinds of controllers. But for a checklist, if the user were to tap on that, they would get a selection list here. They can then tap on uh, another variable, for example, AEREL, 
and then once they go back they would see that um, the variable aerel has been specified. So once that's all completed in terms of selecting of the parameters the user would run. Now I think I set up this example to have an error so if the user would type tap on the run and the program executes and on the server and if if the results are successful oh, okay it, it is successful it would actually show the output in this example if, if there's an error you'll get a log file but the user can then zoom in and look at you know the the example output so in this example the output is an HTML report but let's say for example the user goes back to the list of macros and they generate a macro with different types of parameters which results in let's say a PDF output instead of an HTML um, in that case I'll just show you an example by running it that it would execute on the server and the PDF file will be uh, delivered down to the iPhone so we're now viewing a PDF file I'll go down to page 2 and I'll go ahead and kind of zoom in by pinching it and then you can actually see the output which was a uh, PDF file generated by the macro that the user can then view so the macro could generate you know, by the selected parameters uh, XML or PDF or plain ASCII LST various different formats even a Word document um, that would be delivered to the iPhone